Welcome back to West Virginia Total Resource. Today we're breaking down the main reasons why people are moving from Loudoun County to nearby Jefferson County. This has been a hot topic this year due to so many factors and we wanted to clue you in on what we're hearing and the data behind the decisions people are making. Let's break down the primary drivers, shall we? Jefferson County and Loudoun County are so close together geographically yet they have some very distinct differences. Now, these are the two counties where we predominantly live and work. And I have to say the comparisons go beyond what we can talk about in this video. Yeah, but this is a pretty good start. We always love to hear from our viewers. So if you have any insights related to living in Jefferson or Loudoun or both, comment below. As inflation and home prices continue to go up, the primary catalyst behind a move from Loudoun to Jefferson is undoubtedly the cost of living. Let's dive into some of the numbers. In Jefferson, the average price per square foot this year stands at $182. In contrast, Loudoun Towers at $275. And that was just for this past month of September in 2023. That's more than just a few trips to Starbucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we see a similar trend in the median home prices. In Jefferson County, they hover around the $400,000 mark, whereas in Loudoun, they reach a substantial $775,000 and up. Yeah, it's important to mention that Loudoun has a lot more condo inventory than Jefferson, so the lower priced homes are dragging that average down to $775. It feels like the average price is a lot higher these days. It really does. And there are some even larger differences in property taxes. Let's look at the average home again in Jefferson in 2022. Property taxes were between $1,150 to $1,300. Now that same average home for Loudoun residents a staggering 7,500 to 8,000 in 2023. Yeah, put those taxes on top of higher monthly mortgage payments and that's quite the financial commitment. It should be noted that 2023 rates for Jefferson County were not yet available and certain localities require additional property taxes. These are just some rough numbers, but regardless, the difference is staggering. It really is. Thus, so many people are making the move or starting to call us and talk about it. Speaking of mortgage payments, the first time buyer programs available in Jefferson really blow the Loudon offerings Ooh, out yes. of the water. We just had a client close at a home at a 5.5% interest rate, which compared to market rates saves them around $500 a month. And for buyers who prefer to bring less cash to closing, you can get between $5,000 to 7500 in additional financing. That's really a lot of savings when you're trying to buy a first house. Definitely. Especially compared to Loudoun where, you know, everything is up. Now, shifting to employment. Jefferson County has seen job growth outpace the United States job growth averages recently. And this trend is expected to continue for the next 10 years, according to the demographic data compiled by bestplaces.net. There are a number of major employers near and in Jefferson County, including federal entities like Homeland Security, the IRS, and the U.S. Coast Guard. Additionally, other major manufacturers nearby include the Procter & Gamble production facility and the Clorox plant. Plus, we have other top employers, including nearby Macy's Fulfillment Center, Berkeley Medical Center, and the Hollywood Casino. The proximity to I-81 and I-70 corridor is attractive to manufacturers, so we may see jobs continue to grow in this area. Some of these factories have opened in the last two to five years. That growth seems even more likely when we consider the low cost of land and housing. One of the biggest complaints we hear in Loudoun is that people can't afford to work and live in the county. Yes, this problem is just getting worse, so in the future we may see Jefferson become a more popular destination for employers as homeowners continue to make this move. If you're still watching, we would love it if you would give us a like or a subscribe. Or if you have any anecdotes to share about living in Loudoun or Jefferson, drop them here in the comments so that we can hear your insights and experiences and how they differ or align with others. Now onto the environment and lifestyle. A major deciding factor for some is that Jefferson offers a tranquility that's becoming increasingly rare in Loudoun. Yeah, so more wind chimes, fewer car alarms. That's the hope, though the peepers can be pretty noisy in the summer, I hear. What are peepers? <laughs> They're the noisy frogs that peep in the summer. Oh, I thought like... you were talking about something else. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's what sound machines are for. <laughs> No way, I'm keeping the windows open, I love them. All in all, residents can enjoy a more balanced life. The affordable costs mean you can slow down and enjoy what matters most rather than constantly hustle. Yeah, there are so many enticing outdoor activities to help you get off your devices and make memories. Absolutely. 
from fishing to hiking, Jefferson offers a plethora of nature-centric activities. And can we celebrate that getting into your local fishing spot doesn't usually involve traffic? Definitely. Now, focusing on education. Without getting too deep into things, Loudon has been in the news the last few years more often than many would like for ongoing conflicts and controversies. Meanwhile, in nearby Jefferson County, residents can opt out of public schools and potentially get a grant for private schools. I know a few Loudoun families who would find this appealing. Mm -hmm. Well, as with anything, there's some red tape to get through, but families can apply for the HOPE scholarship. However, make sure you check current eligibility requirements on this one before banking on it. As of the time of this video, kindergarten students who haven't been in school yet can qualify immediately, but older children must spend a certain number of months in the public school system before they qualify. More education innovations. The newly established Eastern Panhandle Preparatory Academy definitely stands out more commonly known as the new charter school. Yeah. <laughs> Spanning 30 acres, it caters from pre-K all the way up to 11th grade. Yeah, in terms of academic standings, Jefferson County school rankings have been lower than Loudoun County historically. This may be in part due to less competition overall and a slower pace of life. However, given the economic surge and developmental influx in Jefferson, there's optimism for positive shifts. Time will tell with that one, but there are more affordable private school options here, especially considering you're paying thousands less a year on your property taxes and mortgage. If you'd like some of our sources for comparing your school options, we've tracked down some of the best websites and resources, including demographic information, graduation rates, and student to teacher ratios. Just send us a message if you'd like some help gathering the data you need. So a bit of peace, a pinch of nature, and a whole lot of savings. Jefferson County is sounding kind of like a dream. You sound like Mary Poppins. <laughs> Many are starting to think so. As the landscape changes, Jefferson emerges as a compelling choice for many. It's about finding the right fit for each individual and family. If you're still curious to learn more, check out our video on the pros and cons of Charlestown to learn about one of the most popular cities in the Eastern Panhandle. Or if you'd rather hit the road and do your own research, we can share our curated list of places to visit to explore Jefferson County. See you next time.